So one of the things that's also important to talk about when you're talking about off is um, whether or not the patient is adequately managed to begin with. There is a fear about using too much levodopa early on, which then makes patients ration it and not want to use it effectively. So they might not be on. Um, one of the nicer things about the newer therapies and the on-demand therapies that are now available is that they're able to manage their off symptoms after they've been adequately managed on levodopa if it's not adequate enough. And then um, they can do that without perpetuating the fear that they're using too much levodopa. The fear is unfounded in the sense that that's not the way levodopa works. The sooner you use it, you don't necessarily get used to it or habituate to it or use up its effectiveness. Um, but that's still something that permeates a lot of patients' concern about the medication. No, yeah, you're right. You know, if you never have an on, you're never going to have an off. So you have to be adequately treated that your symptoms are improved, you are optimally controlled, and then when the disease progresses, you start having these time periods when during the day your symptoms are not optimally controlled, and that's when would be the off time and off periods patients are having. Right, and I think it's fair to point out um, that you know when you're talking about what the patients are talking about in the support groups and things like that, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, and it's not just the patients, it's physicians too. There's a true fear of you know levodopa, which you know 50 years later is still the most effective treatment for Parkinson's disease, and. I think most of us would agree that you know most patients are you know remain undertreated, and um, and so that's I think one of the big reasons why people are very confused about um, off. So some of the pharmacological underpinnings of uh, levodopa therapy are as follows: there's a threshold effect. You have to have enough drugs circulating at a, every point in time to get the dopamine created in the brain. If you're below that level, nothing happens. And unfortunately, a patient can't sense where their blood level of levodopa is. They can't be confident that despite having taken the medication right on time that it necessarily got absorbed because we know the stomach and the entire GI tract is taking a hit from chronic Parkinson's disease. And so it's wishful thinking that because the drug was taken at least 30 minutes ago, it's going to work for them. So that's where on-demand therapies can help. Also drugs that are better at constant delivery, reaching that threshold for effect, is another uh, unmet need of, of therapeutics. And perhaps adjunctive therapies, as we talk about them, will become critical to get more insurance policy that you're getting the drug to the brain in a constant manner throughout the day and even throughout the night if needed. Yeah. You know, Peter, you bring up this, this good point. We've often thought about off as wearing off and reflecting changes of the brain, changes with the disease progression, with striatal denervation and loss of buffering capacity. And this idea that we can't keep recycling levodopa has been underpinning of the mechanism of how we thought about off, but we've learned so much more now about non-dopaminergic means, the role of glutamatergic systems and adenosine systems, and also the gut, because it may not be intuitive to replace an essential neurotransmitter dopamine by swallowing levodopa into where Parkinson's may begin in the gut. 